You've probably heard of Operation Christmas Child. It's the branch of Samaritan's Purse, a nonprofit run by Franklin Graham, that sends the shoebox gifts overseas. Now, according to Franklin Graham, supposedly, Samaritan's Purse sent over 9 million boxes last year alone to over 100 countries and territories for over 80,000 tribal meetings and groups to receive gifts that are hand-packed by individuals here in the States so that underprivileged kids can have a really nice Christmas gift. I actually got the chance to work for Samaritan's Purse this season, and I'm going to give you the inside scoop on what actually happens and the shocking truth behind the scenes about Samaritan's Purse. Aww, Hey, I'm Bruce Wham. I do Christian commentary teachings, testimonies, and biblical commentary here on Spirit Life. Hit the subscribe button if this is your first time joining us. I want to tell you the inside scoop on Operation Christmas Child. And if you've packed a shoebox, you might have been wondering, is this really getting to the people that I think it is? Is this really going to go to a child that's in need? Is Samaritan's Purse really trustworthy? Or is it one of these nonprofits that you know, kind of take advantage of your money and your time and efforts and they get a big cut of it for themselves and the top dogs are prospering and they're not really doing what they're saying they're doing. Or is this trustworthy? Can you trust that your shoebox is actually getting where you want it to go? Let me start by saying I worked behind the scenes. So I can tell you from firsthand experience, I got my, I got my card, I got my name tag and my shirt and I was actually the inspector at one of the facilities right here in Atlanta that processes all of the shoeboxes. So the way that this works, if you've done this, you already know, but you have a list of items that are appropriate to pack, and you as an individual, your family can pack one or 10 or 20 shoeboxes. Sometimes churches pack hundreds of shoeboxes full of gifts. It could be items that are useful, like a toothbrush or socks. It could be items that are fun, just a toy. And there's an age range from age two to 14, and you can differentiate whether it's for girls or for boys. And you as individuals have the opportunity to put together what gifts you think others might enjoy overseas. Now, whether it's at one of the processing facilities in Atlanta or Charlotte or elsewhere, the purpose of processing the boxes is number one, to make sure they're safe. So we actually have a dog sniffer to come through and make sure that there's no contaminants or poisons or any kind of substance that would be harmful to anybody who's involved, whether it's the kid that's receiving it or anybody along the shipping route along the way. Then you've got volunteers who come into these warehouses. Some of them drive hours. Here in Atlanta, I knew of people that were driving all the way from Mississippi and Florida, even from Illinois and other places who were coming all the way down to help process for hours at a time these shoe boxes, they'll open them up, make sure that the items are appropriate. Now when I say appropriate, they're not judging if your gift is cool or not. But what they're doing is seeing as if there's any liquids that could spill and ruin that shoebox and other cardboard around it. They're making sure that there's nothing contraband. For example, when you're shipping overseas, you have to worry about customs and what's allowed on a shipping container, what's allowed in port, things like that. So these volunteers are coming in, they're driving for hours, sometimes spending the night, sometimes they bring a whole youth group, sometimes it's a local team. It might be a local school or it could be people just looking to get community service hours, but they're spending hours making sure that the boxes are wrapped and appropriately taped so that they're not bulging or falling apart and that they'll all fit in the containers together. My job as the inspector was to actually make sure that all the volunteers were doing their jobs properly. And the people that are hired on, and like myself, are there to help train the volunteers and help coach them and ensure that they're doing things properly. As the inspector, I got the opportunity to view hundreds of boxes. And as I was looking through these boxes, the shocking truth, number one, is that these boxes were put together with care. They were put together with love. I often saw handwritten notes from people that didn't know who was going to receive their gift, but they said, I want you to receive this gift with love from America. I want you to receive this gift with love from my family. Hey, God loves you. Jesus loves you. He made you with a purpose. I hope that these gifts bless you. I was shocked to see the care. You know, some of my job was to make sure that the boxes were in the right format, that they weren't bulging and overfilled. And sometimes I would get one that was overfilled. And the first time that happened, I got annoyed. I said, why can't someone follow the rules and just put the box together the right way? And I opened it and I saw these were really nice store-bought gifts. They weren't hand-me-downs. I saw name brand clothing and shoes and sandals. I saw really expensive gifts. I saw things that were put together with really a lot of care. 
And so I was shocked to see at the level that people were really putting care and concern behind each and every gift. Now Samaritan's Purse works year round. Operation Christmas Child works year round. And the gifts are actually delivered year round because as you can imagine to ship uh, an entire freight of gifts all the way across to uh, you know, the east coast of Africa or even up into the Pacific Islands all the way across the globe. This is actually an endeavor that takes many months and so people aren't always opening their gift on Christmas. But that's not actually the shocking truth that I wanted to talk about. The shock that I received was in my hiring process. I thought I was just going to go work in a warehouse for a month, maybe lift some boxes, pull a pallet jack, you know, do some kind of physical labor that doesn't require a lot of skill or a lot of um, integrity or character. But my hiring process was one of the most elaborate that I've ever been through. And I've lived in the corporate world for quite some time now. And I can tell you that Samaritan's Purse actually desires real born again believers to work for them at every interval, whether it is just in the warehouse for a few weeks, a few months, or whether it's across the board for their full-time staff. They want people who aren't just nominal Christians, but those who can explain the gospel and evangelize. They actually asked me during my interview process, I had several layers of interviews, and they asked me to explain the gospel. How would I share the gospel with someone who wasn't born again? I gotta tell you, that really impressed me. Because here I was thinking, this is just a temporary job, who cares, just hire people off the street. No, no, no. They care about integrity at every single step of the way. I was highly impressed that they didn't want to just bring in anybody to work on this project. They wanted Christians who cared about the project at an emotional level, at a spiritual level. And you know, even during the processing times, we had busy days. They ran two shifts and we were running from eight in the morning all the way till 10 at night. And they would pause, even though they had a lot of work to do, they would pause at several hour intervals to pray over these boxes. They would actually pause the whole work staff. I mean, hundreds of people in the warehouse would all pause, lay their hands on the shoe boxes, and we would pray. And the chaplain would lead us to bless these boxes to bless the people that were going to receive them. How fantastic is that? That we didn't just want people to receive a physical item. We wanted them to receive the love of Jesus along the way. I was just astounded to see at the level that they cared, not just for doing humanitarian work, but to see that the gospel goes forth. In fact, with every box, there's an opportunity for people to hear the gospel. Now, you don't have to put Bible tracts or Bibles in the shoe boxes. You can if you want. But Samaritan's Purse doesn't have any strings attached. The kids receiving the gifts is just a free gift. You don't have to join a church. You don't have to get baptized to receive a gift or something like that. They're not trying to force Jesus on anybody. But they do get the opportunity to hear the gospel at the gift-giving events and to join a discipleship program where they get long-term training on who Jesus is and why they are important to Jesus, why they have a destiny and a purpose. I've worked with thousands of nonprofits over the past five years. Thousands. I've helped to start many of them. And I can tell you that this is one nonprofit that's doing things properly. Not just because they have good organization, not just because they actually care about what they're doing, not just because they uh, don't have any kind of scandal or something like that, but because they're doing what they're saying that they're doing. The level of attention, the level of detail, the level of care was by far at the most top excellent level that you could ask for. When I said at the beginning of this opening that they sent over nine million boxes last year alone, that's true. Everything that Samaritan's Purse says that they're going to do, they do, and more. They don't even boast on some of the behind the scenes things that are taking place. If you really want to get down to the details and hear the stories, they've got a lot of those to share on their website. You can go to Samaritan's Purse. You can actually look at Operation Christmas Child. Just type it up. You can actually look at their YouTube channel and you can see tons of incredible stories. Boxes that are being shipped by boat, by camel, by donkey <laughs> over rough terrain to get to these remote villages where children are really and truly in poverty really and truly in need. Many times the boxes are being given to those who are in war-torn countries. A lot of the children who are receiving gifts need a pair of socks because they don't have any shoes or socks. They need that bandana because they're in sweltering heat and the sun's burning down on them. They don't have a lot. And so I'm not one of these Americans that's saying, oh, let's just you know give a little bit to these poor people to make ourselves feel better. Samaritan's Purse is doing good, actual humanitarian work and for the purpose of Jesus. They're sharing the care and the love 
that Jesus has for us, and they're paying it forward to those who are actually in need. There's nobody at the top who's skimming boxes or selling items or doing anything scandalous. The shocking truth is that there is no shocking dirt to be found. With an organization this big, you might expect that there's some sort of dirt. You might expect that there's some sort of scandal. There's none. And I can tell you, not just because of my position at the warehouse behind the scenes, but from doing my own research, which you can also do. Take, don't take my word for it. Look for yourself. Samaritan's Purse is the real deal. When you pack a shoebox, it's actually going to a kid who's in need. It's actually going through a processing center where people are praying over that box to make sure that it accomplishes not just a physical good deed, but a spiritual one, to make sure that the kids know they're loved, they're cared for. The shocking truth of Operation Christmas Child is that you can give a small gift, fill up a box with little trinkets and items and important things, but not that costly for us here. But you can ship it overseas through this nonprofit, through this ministry that's going to take good care of it and make sure that the kid on the other end who receives that gift is actually and deeply blessed. I encourage you, if you've never put together a shoebox, go ahead and do some. You know what? Some people actually put together a box one a month throughout the whole year or one a week. It's not that hard and it's actually fun. And if you have kids that want to work with you, you can tell them, hey, get something that you would want to receive. And they pick out items and they put together a box according to their age group or according to their gender. And they send something that's going to really and actually make an impact. I encourage you to create your own shoe boxes. Get involved with Samaritan's Purse. Go volunteer at one of their facilities if there's one nearby or maybe not nearby. Maybe it's somewhere that's got a little bit of a drive involved, but if you go and take that time to drive out to the facility this next Christmas when it's time to process all the boxes, I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. I guarantee you that you will find you're being blessed just as much as the kids who are going to receive these gifts. And hit the like and subscribe button on this video because why not promote Samaritan's Purse the way they deserve? Why not support Operation Christmas Child the way it deserves? Why not take that 10 million shoe boxes and bump it up to 20 or 30 million? That could be an amazing thing that you could help to do just by hitting the subscribe and like button and sharing this video. This is Bruce on Spirit Life.